Hello everyone, my name is Icy. Namaste. I'm a pure yoga teacher based in Hong Kong and very happy today to share with you this yoga strength class focused on one of my favorite arm balancing poses called Blind Pigeon or in Sanskrit, Akapada Gavasana. If you've never heard of this pose before, don't worry, I will guide you through step by step. Uh, many of you probably are very familiar with pigeon pose, and this pose is called flying pigeon. So it's literally a pigeon pose on top of a chaturanga pose. With your palms balancing onto the floor, your body and your feet will be flying in the air. So it's a very cool pose. Not an easy one because it not only requires your upper body strength from your arms, from your shoulders, but also your core strength, and very important, your hip mobility in terms of external rotation. But don't worry so much. We will guide you through step by step. We are doing a lot of hip opening today and a lot of strengthening and conditioning uh, poses for to build up your arms and shoulder strength. Before we start, let's come to a comfortable sitting position of your choice and close your eyes. Take a breath in. Feel the expansion of your rib cage towards all directions. And then exhale, raise it out from your ears. Keep your shoulders relaxed, shoulders relaxed. Let's do it one more time. Take a breath in, feel the elongation of your entire spine, sending the crown of your head to the ceiling. And then exhale, raise it out again. One last time, raising all the positive energies and qualities you wish to have in your life. And then raise out any negative thoughts or energies you may have. Draw your palms in front of your heart center, bow your head to your heart. Let's send our gratitude to all those frontline heroes, the medical professionals, the cleaners, and all the service industry staff for their continuous efforts day and night to fight the virus also to save our lives. Namaste. Let's come to all four positions now, hands and knees. Make sure your shoulders are stacking above the wrists and your hips are stacking above the knees. Very easy cat cow stretch, initiate the movement from the tailbone. So inhale, sending your tailbone up, soften your belly, sending your chest forward, lifting your head, Feel the stretch for the front side of the body. Exhale, tailbone going down, draw your belly in, ribs in. Lifting your upper back, last thing is to relax your head down, eyes looking at your belly button. Inhale, coming to the cow pose again. Feel like your palms is dragging your neck back as you send your chest forward. And then exhale the other way. Pull your belly button in and up, building up some connection with your deeper core muscles starting from now. Inhale, coming to the cow pose again. Really feel the stretch. And then feel the conditions in your spine again. And then exhale the other way. One last time. Inhale, coming to the cow pose. And then exhale to a cat. Slide your shoulder blades away from each other. Lift up your upper back. Coming to the neutral spine now, placing your right hand to the center of the mat. As you inhale, twist your body to the left. As your right arm pushing the floor, reaching your left arm higher. And then exhale, thread the needle. Bring your left shoulders to the floor, left part of the head to the floor. Bring your right arm behind your back, wrap in the thigh of your left leg. As you're pushing down your left arm, turn your right 
right shoulder and to raise high. And slowly release, bring your left hand to the center of the mat. As you inhale, reaching your right arms up. Stack your right shoulders above your left shoulders and try to keep your hips at the center. And then exhale, right arms to the floor, right shoulders to the floor. Bring your left arms behind your back, wrap in the thigh of your right leg. Pushing down your right arms to the floor, turn your left shoulder and ribs up high. And slowly release. Return your palms to the floor underneath shoulders again. Table climb. So you're pushing down your palms to the floor, tuck your toes under. Lifting your knees two inches off from the floor, that's five centimeters only, so not too high. Draw the ribcage towards the center, pull your belly button in and out. You are fighting against the gravity now, so really focus on lifting the belly away from the floor. So imagine your body is like a table now, and I'm serving a cup of hot coffee on the top of your back. So make sure the table is very flat, very stable, so that the coffee will not get spilled. Hold it here, pushing the palms away from the floor. Five, four, three, two, and one. Lower down the knees to the floor and then sit your hips back towards your heels. Now let's do some exercise called blinkers. This is to warm up your forearms muscles so they can protect your wrist joints. So palms forward, and just open and shut, open and shut your palms forcefully and quickly. You can actually see as you're doing this movement, the forearms muscles are moving. And after doing this for 20 seconds or so, you will feel some heat build up in your forearms muscle. That means the muscles have been activated, and you can use them wisely when you are weight bearing. Continue doing this for another 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Good. Release. Now let's do some stretch for the forearms muscles as well. So palms to the floor, fingers pointing to the knees direction. If your palm, forearms are quite tight, shifting the knees slightly forward. But if you are more flexible, shifting the knees back. And then shifting the hips back towards the heels. The base of the palms may be lifting a little bit, and that's okay. You should be able to feel some stretching sensation right now onto your forearms. Okay. And slowly release. Good. Now let's reverse to the other side. So palms facing up, fingers pointing to the knees, and then shifting your hips back. You can keep the knees, uh, you can keep the elbows slightly bent. Hold it here for five, four, three, two, one, and release. Good. Now shake it out. Make some rotation for your wrist joints. It's very important to warm up your wrist before any weight bearing poses onto your palms. Good. Return to the all four position again. And now we're doing some hip stuff already. So lifting your left knee, make a big circles. And reverse the direction. Mobilize your hip joints. Good. Now hover your left knee slightly off from the floor. I will show you quickly what I want you to do. Lift up your left knee to the side. Try to keep your left knee same high as your hips, and both arms should be straight. It's very easy that you lean too much weight to the right side, right elbows are bent. I don't want you to do that. So keep your both elbows straight, chest still facing down. And then keep the knees high, squeeze your buttocks, bring the knees back. You want to keep your lower back as flat as possible, no back bend here, but more hip extension. So try to squeeze the buttocks, lifting the knees higher than the pelvis. And then from here, you round your back. Draw the knees forward towards the tip of your nose. Push your hands to the floor, widening the shoulder blades. And then you return to the starting position. Okay? Now let's do two more times together. Knees open to the sides. Bring the knees back. Squeeze the buttocks, square the pelvis. Chest forward, draw your belly in. 
It should feel the hips muscle is really engaged hard as well. And then exhale, lunge up the back, bring your knees forward, try to touch the tip of your nose. And then return to the starting position. One last time. Remember, don't bend your right elbows. Keep your right elbow straight. Bring your left knees to the left side. Same height as the hips. Bring the left knees back. Bring your left foot up to the ceiling. Square your pelvis. And then last one, long your upper back, pushing the floor. And then release the left knees to the floor. Coming down, very good. Now let's do the right side. Hover your right foot off from the floor, right knee off from the floor. Make a circles first. Mobilize your hip joints. So try to draw a big, big circle. And the other direction. Good. Now this is the starting position. Bring your right knees to the right side. Hover it so that your right knee is in the same length, same level as your right hips. Bring your right knees back, square your pelvis, lifting your right foot higher. And then exhale, round your back, draw your knees forward, almost touching the tip of your nose, round your upper back. Return to the starting position, bring your right knees to the right side again. Engage your buttocks, keep the back side of the body really engaged, draw the belly in, square the pelvis. And then last thing, knees to the chest. Good, and then coming down. You should feel something on your arms and on your core after this one, and also something on the hips. Now straighten your left leg, with your left foot to the floor, tap your toes. Shift the body weight back as if you try to press them down your heels to the floor. Feel some stretching on your calves. If you want to intensify the stretch, you can hover your right knee slightly off on the floor and really shifting the weight back. Good, and then release. Now straighten your right leg back. Shift the body weight back. Almost feel like you're pressing down your heels to the floor. And then you're lifting your left knee slightly off on the floor to intensify the stretch. Good, and then release. Okay, now we'll be doing our table plank round two. Pressing your hands down, tap your toes, lifting your knees two inches off from the floor. Easy option. Stay here. Harder option, reaching your left leg back. So you feel like you're shooting out your left leg as if you're shooting out arrow. Hold it here, have it square, ribs in, belly off from the floor. Three, two, one. Coming in and switching sides. Pushing the floor, don't let the chest sink. Five, four, three, two, one. And then bring the knees down to the floor. Very good. Now step your left foot forward, right foot forward. Coming to a malasana position. Let me just turn around so that I can be facing you. Stay in this pose for a while. This is a wonderful pose to actually release any pressure on the lower back. And I also help you opening the hips. And I would like to share with you uh, uh, a story, a personal story. So my grandma, who is already 92 years old. And she lives in China. As you know, in many parts of China, the toilets are still old style toilets. Meaning you need to squat down all the way rather than the Western toilets, which is you are sitting. So I asked my mom, because I don't live with my grandma uh, anymore. I've been moving out of my hometown for a long time. I asked my, grandma, asked my mother, how does my grandma actually go to those squatting toilets? And my mother told me, 92 years old, grandma, she can actually squat down all the way and then stand up by herself. And I'm really impressed by that. So, because that actually requires a lot of hip mobility and also the lower body strength. Okay, good. Now, sit your hips to the floor. If you have a block handy, squeeze the block in between the knees. If you do not have block, don't worry, just squeeze the knees. I want you to activate the hand side muscles a little bit. Letting your feet in the air, coming to your modified Navasana, bow pose. So you're lifting your chest up, 
Draw your ribs in towards the center, belly button towards the spine. Hugging in the knees towards the chest. So think about you want to touch the block with the chest. Reaching your arms forward. As you inhale, reaching your arms up. As you exhale, twist your body towards your left side. Inhale, reaching your arms up. Exhale, twist your body towards your right side. Inhale, reaching your arms up. One more time, twist to the left. Try to twist a little bit more. Inhale, up. And exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, up. One last time, exhale, twist to the left. If your knees started, started to slide out, hug me more. Inhale, up. Exhale, to the left. Good. Now coming back to the center, reaching your arms forward. Starting to curl your tailbone forward and then coming to a low boat pose. Still squeeze that block in between your thighs, arms reaching forward, eyes looking towards your feet. Draw your ribs in, belly button down so there's no arch on the lower back, no gap between lower back and the floor. Hold it here for five, four, three, two, and one. Good. And then come down to the floor. Take out the block and then bend your knees, feet down. Interlace your fingers, hands supporting on the back side of your head. A little bit more core work. Inhale, prepare, exhale, curl up to the tip of your shoulder blades. Inhale, reaching your arms forward, grab the back of your thighs, Bend your elbows coming up a little bit higher. Eyes look forward. Remember how high your chest is. Reaching your arms up. And then bring your arms forward without lower down the chest. Reaching your arms up. Reaching your arms forward. Reaching your arms up. Keep your ribs in. Eyes keep looking forward. Arms up. Arms down. Arms down. One more time. Arms up. Arms down. Hold it here for three, two, one, and coming down. You should feel some burning sensation on the upper abdominals, which is always a great sensation to feel. You know, you feel engaged, you feel strong. Second part. Lifting your feet in the air, straighten your legs towards the ceiling. If you have tight hamstring, maybe your legs are this angle. That's okay. Inhale, prepare, exhale, curl up again. Grab your back of your legs, okay? So it depends on your hamstring flexibility. Maybe you grab the back of your thighs. Maybe you can grab your calves or grab your ankles. And then reaching left leg forward. So with your arms, pulling yourself higher up a little bit. Eyes looking at your left leg, outstretched toes. Keep your body stable, switch. And switch, no arching on the lower back. Keep pressing your lower back to the floor. For another five, exhale four, exhale three, exhale two, exhale one. Now reaching your arms forward, no longer grabbing the legs, just switch. Five, four, three, two, and one. Very good. Now coming down. Hug your knees to your chest. Rock your body side to side. For a couple of times, massage your lower back. Bend your knees again. Land your feet to the floor. Curl your spine up, coming to a bridge pose. Interlace your fingers. Roll your shoulders under, lifting your chest up. As you're pressing your feet down, engage your glutes. Engage your hamstrings, lifting your pelvis higher. And feel some gentle stretch on the front side of the body after the core work. Hug your feet closer together. Pressing your left foot down, reaching your right leg up. And then bring your right leg up and down as if you are painting the wall with a big brush being your right leg. For another three, two, and one. Lower down your right foot to the floor, but don't lower the hips. Check that your hips are not dropped. Elevate the hips again. 
Pressing down your right foot, straighten your right leg towards the ceiling. Moving your left leg up and down. Five, four, three, two, and one. Lower down your left foot to the floor. Release the hands and slowly coming down to the floor. Let's do a lion pigeon. Left ankles on top of your right knees. Hands can be interlaced behind your thighs or in front of your shin bone. Pull your right leg closer to the chest and open your left knee towards the left side and also pushing your left knee out away from the body. You should feel some stretch on the outer hips. How intense the stretching sensation is depends on your tightness. So just stay here for five breaths. And release, switching sides. Getting your right ankles or heels above your left knee. Interlace your fingers in front of your left side shin bone or behind your left leg. Use your arm strength to pull your left knees closer to the body and the right knees away from the body and also to the right side. Enjoy the stretching sensation on the outer hips. and release. Okay, now from here, roll yourself up to a seated position. Cross your legs, walk your feet back, downward facing dog. In your down dog position, check that your feet are same width as your hips width apart, your hands are same width as your shoulders apart. If your hamstring is tight, you can slightly bend your knees, but try to shift more weight towards your feet. From the side view, I want to see your wrist joints, your shoulder joints, and your hips as a straight line. So you elevate your shoulders, pushing down to the floor, and then sending the weight of your chest, your armpit, all back towards the direction of your legs. Relax your head, relax your neck. One more breath here. As you inhale, shift forward to high plank. Shoulders stacking above your wrists, shoulder, hips, and heels, a straight line. Your toes are curled in, right? You're pressing your toes down to the floor as well, using the leg strength to support your body in this position. And then check that your chest is not sinking down like this. You're actually pushing the floor so that you're widening your shoulder blades away from each other. Hold it here for three, two, and one. Lower down your knees to the floor. We'll be doing five push-ups together right now, but I want to explain the alignment of the push-up first because I see many students not doing push-up in the correct way. So if you're doing a half push-up, meaning the knees coming down to the floor, many students will do the push-up with the shoulders going down, but the hips still in the air. Not in the air, but hips will be always in the air, but hips above the shoulders high. What I want instead is from all four positions, you stack your palms one palm distance forward. You shift your shoulders forward and then lower your hips until your shoulder hips to knees as a straight line. Check that there's no arching on the lower back, so it's not like a cow pose, it's more like a cat pose. With your tailbone aiming, towards the back of your heels. From here, as you inhale, you bend your elbows, let your shoulder, chest, hips go down together as a straight line, and exhale, go up as a straight line. So your shoulder and hips always moving up and down together. If you can tighten your torso, brace your core, the body will be almost as stiff as a stick, okay? If you're doing a full version with the knees up, this is your high plank. You shift the shoulders forward first, but you're still pressing your toes to the floor. Sometimes students come into the toe tips and that's a little bit too much. So pressing down the toes and the balls of the feet to the floor, leaning the shoulders slightly forward. And then from here, you hug your elbows in towards your torso, lower down, squeeze your buttocks. 
and then exhale, pushing up. Okay? So choose your options about five times together. Inhale down, exhale up. Okay, now lower down the chest all the way, belly all the way to the floor. Inhale, coming up to a mini cobra. Not too high, because I'm going to ask you to lengthen your palms now. Keep your back muscles really engaged. Keep your chest lifted off from the floor. Hold it here for five. Waking up your back muscle, which is also an important part of your core. Three, two, and one. Interlace your fingers, pull your arms back, opening your shoulders more, floating your legs out from the floor. Hugging in the inner thighs towards each other, engage your buttocks. Another five, four, three, two, and one. Release the head down to the floor. This time, come into your higher core back. Lifting your head, dragging the legs back, sending your chest forward. And then exhale, push, go back, down the facing back. Bend your knees slightly, hop. Coming to a Malasana position again. And let's try a foundational balancing poses called Bakasana now. So get your hands to the floor. You want to get your kneecap behind the tricep. Shift the body weight forward. If you are scared of falling, which is very legitimate concerns, you can place in a towel or blanket underneath your face in case you fall. So shift forward, eyes looking forward, pushing down the hands, round your back, draw your belly in. Lifting one foot up, and then you can do tiptoe, tiptoe if you're not sure. For those of you who can, lifting the foot up. Hold it here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Four, three, two, and one. Lower down the feet to the floor. Return, down the facing back. Inhale, lift up your left leg. And then exhale, step forward in between your hands. Inhale, reaching your arms up. Interlace your thumb, pull your arms back. Next to your ears, or even behind your ears. Square the pelvis, sending your right pelvis more forward, left pelvis more back, and then sinking down the hips a bit more. Feel the stretch on the hip flexor on the right side. A tight hip flexor can pose some barrier when you try to externally rotate the hips as well. Hold it here for three, two, one. Getting your right elbows on top of your left elbows, coming to eagle arms. Shift the body weight forward to your left foot, lifting your right leg up, coming to your warrior's three variation. I want you to try shooting out the right leg higher than the usual warrior's three. Yeah, higher up, higher up, above the hips level. Three, two, and one. Bend your left knee, slow with control. Find the floor with your right foot, release the arms, Interlace your fingers, roll your shoulders back, sending your chest up. And then exhale, humble warrior. Feel the stretching sensation on your left hips. Make sure your left knee is pointing straight forward. Try to melt down your shoulders lower, and your left shoulder should be inside of your left knee. For those of you who are more flexible, and touch the floor with the crown of your head. Squeeze your shoulder blades to roll your arms away from your torso. And you can shoulder stretch at this position as well. And slowly release your hands. Bring your left shoulder inside of your left knee. You can move in your right foot slightly back, coming to a side angle pose. Sinking down your hips lower. And then feel the sensation on your left hip. Out your side, and 
your right foot down side. Now bring your right arm behind your back. You can come into a half bind, grabbing the inner thigh of your left leg or a full bind. Or you can use a small towel if you wish. Shift the body weight forward to your left foot. This is a very tricky leg balance. Keep your left knee slightly bent first. Shooting out your right leg towards the back of the room. Hold it here for three, two, and one. Slow with control, lower your right foot to the floor. Lower down your right knees to the floor, straighten your left leg. Moving your left foot slightly forward and coming to a half split. Every inhalation you take, try to lengthen your spine. The exhalation you make, fold over deeper from your hips. So you try to reduce the gap between the belly and the plank of your left leg. If you are flexible, you can lower down your elbows to the floor. If you are tight, you can use two blocks to support your hands. Square the pelvis more in this position. Move your left hips back, right hips forward. Get a really good stretch on your hinge. And now slowly release. Bend your left knees again. Reaching your arms forward. Make sure you have enough space. Straighten your arms. Lifting the back knee off from the floor. Coming to a very long version of lizard pose. Sinking down the chest as much as you can. Three, two, and one. Lower down the right knees to the floor, walk your hands back. Reaching your left arms back, grab your right foot, and then pull the heels towards the butt. Hold it here for three, feel the stretch for the quads. Let the hip flex on the right side. Two, and one. Release. Lower down your left hands to the floor, step your left foot back, downward facing back. Now as your left hand keep pushing to the floor, bring your right arm by the sides of the hips or behind your back. So coming to this one arm downward facing dog version. As you inhale, shift forward, stacking your left shoulder above your left wrist, one arm plank. This is not a side plank, so your chest should be still facing down. And check that you are not dumping all the way to your left hands, sinking the chest. You actually need to lift your chest off on the floor. Use the serratus muscles to push it down. And then from here, shift back, one arm dog again. Inhale, shift forward, one more plank. Pushing the floor. Use the serratus muscles. And then exhale, pushing back. When you go back, you want to form this 180 degree over the arm pad again. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, push and go back. Now from here, walk your right foot one foot distance forward. Right hand grab the outside of the ankles or maybe outside of the knees, depends on your hamstring flexibility. Leaning the weight, adjust the weight so you can balance it on your left hand and your right foot while you're floating your left leg up. Think about shooting your left leg higher. Three, two, and one. Slowly release. Bring your right hand down to the floor, shifting your feet back. Normal down dog distance. Inhale, shift forward, high plank. And now let's three times, so push up to build up upper body strength. So shift forward. One, two, three. Lower down to the floor, inhale, coming up to a cobra. And this time, exhale, lower down your forearms to the floor. Pressing down your forearms, lifting your knees. Keep your shoulder, hips, and feet as a straight line. We're just going to hold here for 10 seconds. When you have a stronger core, the body weight 
may be the same, and actually it should be the same. When you are doing any arm balancing poses, the body will feel lighter because the weight distribution is more centered when you know how to engage your core muscles. Lower down the knees to the floor. One more time, cobra. And then exhale, downward facing back. Now we're switching side now. As you inhale, lifting your right leg up. As you exhale, step forward in between the hands. Inhale, reaching your arms up. Hook your thumb in the other way. Pull your arms up and back. Sinking your hips low, but keep the back leg straight. Now it is here for three, two, and one. Left elbows on top of the right this time. Shift the body weight forward. Floating your left leg up. Parallel with the floor first, and after that, try to lower your chest more. And then lifting your left leg higher up. Shooting out your left leg towards the ceiling kind of sensation. Three, two, and one. Bend your right knee. Slow with control. Find the floor with your left foot. Roll down the heels to the floor with the toes turning 45 degrees. Interlace your fingers, arms behind your back. Lift up your chest. And then exhale. Humble warrior. Good hip opening sensation in this pose. Release the hands. Bring your right arms, right shoulders inside of your right knee. Reaching your left arms up. You can slide your left foot further away from the right foot, sinking down the hips more. Bring your left arms behind your back. If you want to try the binding, see, I want to lower my shoulders more first. Internally rotate my right shoulders. And then get the elbows underneath the knees, shifting the forearms back. Once you're coming to the binding, shift the body weight forward to your right foot. You can keep the right knee slightly bent. Reaching your left leg up. Shooting out your left leg. Three. Oops. And one, slowly lower down the left foot to the floor. Lower down the left knees to the floor, straighten your right leg. As you inhale, lengthening your spine. As you exhale, bow forward. Bend your right knees again, moving your right foot towards the right side of the mat. Walk your hands forward, keep your arms straight. Sinking down your hips, sinking down your chest, as low as you can. This pose can feel very intense if you have tight hips. So focus on using the breathing to relax your mind and then relax the body. Every inhalation you take, to you descend your breath. To the body part where you feel the most tightness and sensation. And lower down the left knees to the floor. Walk your hands back. Bend your left knee. Moving your right hand towards your left foot. Pull the heels towards the hips. And slowly release. Hands down, step your right foot back, return to the downward facing dog. Move your left arms back behind your body. One arm dog again. We'll be doing three times one arm dog to one arm plank. Inhale, shift forward. Pushing the floor, lifting the chest up high. So just imagine your shoulder blade should not be sticking up. It should be quite flat and broad. And then exhale, shift back. When you shift back, go all the way back, open your armpit. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, shift back. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale. 
exhale, shifting back. One more time. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, shifting back. Now move your left hand forward. Choose your option, knees down or knees up. Three times of push up. Lower down all the way to the floor. Inhale, coming up to a cobra. And exhale from here. Let's return to Chaturanga. And then hold it. Remember I said flying pigeon is literally a pigeon pose on top of your Chaturanga. So do your Chaturanga right. Three, two, one. Inhale to a cobra. And then exhale. Lower down your knees to the floor, coming to your child's pose. Keep your knees wide open, resting your forehead to the floor. Okay, coming out of your child's pose now, and let's do a little bit more hip opening. This exercise is called 90-90, so you're trying to keep both of your knee joints at 90 degree. I learned this exercise from my favorite physio. So you're pushing down your left hand to your left knees. Use your arm strength, really try to fix your left knee. And then you're lifting your right knee up. Try to open this ankle between the thighs as much as you can. You're aiming to point your right knees up to the ceiling. You should feel a lot of stretching sensation on the hips already. When you really cannot go anymore, roll down your right side buttocks to the floor. Once your right side buttocks to the floor, keep your right knee up. Internally rotate your left hip until your left knee is touching down. And then you lower down your right knees to the floor. So it's a wonderful exercise for improving your hip mobility. If you have back pain issues, I find this exercise quite useful as well. Right hand pushing down your right knees. Lifting your left knee up. You are actually doing external rotation for your left hip joints now. So try to point your left knee up as much as you can. As much as you can. When you really cannot do that anymore, roll down your left hips to the floor. Now, keep your left hand underneath your left knee supported. Internally rotate your right hip joints and feel your right knee touching down. And then you're touching your left knee. So let's do that for a couple of times. Every time it should feel slightly easier. So you also push yourself a little bit harder to open the angle and feel the sensation on the hip joints. Open, open, open. Roll down. And turn and rotate. And then coming down. Also observe through this exercise to see which side of the hips is tighter. So it's a good exercise to observe and realize any asymmetry in the body as you go. And I have very flexible students in my class before who can do more than 180 degree front split, more than 180 degree side split, and when I asked her to do this exercise, she still told me she feels something. So this is actually can be a very good active stretch for your hips. Good. One more time. And lower it down. Good. Now bend your right knees. A seated pigeon. Left ankle above your right knees. I'll show you from the side. Arms should be behind your body, palms behind your hips. So you're pushing down your palms, straighten your arms to send your chest forward. If your left knee probably wants to come in, in this way, you need to use the hip external rotator to push in your left knee out and forward. Use your arms to push down, sending your chest forward, and then just enjoy the sensation on your hips. Especially if you're sitting for a long time, even though we are working from home for the majority of the people, 
you're still sitting probably, right? In front of the computer or the sofa. So the hip joint can get really tight because you are fixed the hip joint to a certain angle for a long time. So now let's just stretch that out. If your chest already is very close to the shin bones, I'll give you a second option. You're moving your right foot slightly forward and then grab the bottom of your right foot. As you're stepping down your right foot towards the floor, you will lean in your chest more forward and you probably feel stronger sensation in this position. Three, two, and one. Slowly release. Feels good, right? Okay, let's do it this right away. Right ankles above your left knees. Again, you need to push in your right knee to the right side first, and then going forward. Pushing the hands down, sending the chest forward. If you feel any knee discomfort in this position, probably because your hip is really tight. So think more about right knee going out and then going forward. I find this really helpful as I have very tight hips as well. So right knee going out and then forward, pushing the arms down, sending the chest forward. Three, two, and one. Good. Second stage, or you can stay at step one. Pushing down your left foot and then leaning your chest more forward. So we release. Now let's do double pigeon. So for your double pigeon pose, ideally it should be right ankle stacking above the left knees, right knee stacking above the left ankles, and then you lean forward. If this is too much for the knees, you're moving your right ankle in front of your left knees. This will give you a lot more space, and then you lean forward. So choose the option, but don't injure your knees, okay? Knee joints can be very fragile and very difficult to heal. So. Try to flex your ankles so that you feel a little bit more sensation. Again, using your arms gently but firmly pressing down the top knee. And slowly release. Let's do it to the other side. Right foot down. Choose your option whether you want to place your left heels in front of your right knees or on the top. On the top is, of course, much more intense. Okay, so pushing your left knee out, creating a little bit more space, and then coming down. You can use your hands as well, grab your thighs to help externally rotate the hips, and then bow forward. And then slowly release. Good. Now we're coming to a pigeon pose, but we'll be doing the pigeon pose in a different way from the usual. So normally when you do the pigeon pose, the teacher will be always say, oh, you need to square your pelvis and then you lean forward. Yeah? But today I want you to do an active pigeon, which will be really helpful for the flying pigeon pose later because I want you to understand this action of pushing down your shin bones to the floor and lifting the hips up. So I want you to unsquare your hips, just let your left hips falling down to the floor. Chest facing forward, you're pushing down your left shin bones to the floor, lifting your left hips, and then from here you square your hips. Let me show you from the front side. lifting your left hips up, okay? Show you from this side as well, so that you get a three-dimensional view. So pushing down, shin bones to the floor, lifting the hips up. Let your hips falling down again, 
pushing down the shin bones, elevate the hips. Let's do three more times. Three, two, and one. Good. And now switch to the other side. So really feel like you're pushing down your right ankles, heels, shin bone, and the knees to the floor. Lifting the hips up, coming down. Pushing down, lifting the hips up, coming down. One more time. Down. Good. Okay? So this is a very important action. When we do the flying pigeon, apply the same force. Pushing down your shin bones to the arms. Let me quickly show you the flying pigeon pose. And then I will explain a little bit more. Figure four. Figure four, okay? Flex your ankle. Make a hook with your toes. Bend forward. Left knee behind your left tricep. And then left ankles hooking on the outside of the tricep on the right arm. Lean the body weight forward. Very important. Moving your right foot slightly back. Bend your right knee, lifting your right foot up. Pushing down your left shin bones to the floor. Elevate the hips. And then shooting out your right leg back. Okay? And coming down. So as you can see, as I explained at the beginning of the class, this is literally a pigeon pose on top of your chaturanga. Yeah? So just to explain a little bit, and I think this is a very important concept to understand, because once you understand, it will be so much easier for all the arm balancing poses. I have two blocks here. I want the top block to be balanced on top of the bottom block. If the top block is here, it will keep falling down. Why? Because the weight on this part is much heavier than the other part. So you need to keep shift forward until the weight is more or less equal and then the top block can be balanced on the bottom. So this is the same rationale as we're doing any arm balancing poses. The hips and legs are much heavier than the upper body. So you really need to lean forward in order to balance. Now, how much forward you have to lean? Leaning forward is very scary for beginners. And I understand that. But how much forward you need to lean? If this bottom block, consider it same as our forearms. If it's here, even if the weight is more than the same, it's not going to balance, right? Because this bottom block is not vertical. It's with the slope. Even if you're leaning the top block forward a lot, it's not going to balance well. So you need to make sure the bottom block is vertical, and that gives you key indicator on how much you need to shift forward. So coming back to the Bakasana pose again, when you shift forward, you need to shift forward until your elbow is stacking above the wrists. This is how much you need to shift forward. If you feel scared, you can place blanket or tower underneath your head. I don't have a blanket prepared for today, so just get a block here. Leaning forward, lifting one foot up, Keep pushing with your hands, draw the belly in, and then lifting the other foot up. Okay? So for the flying pigeon, it's the same thing. But you need to make up a hook with your ankles, and then wrap it outside of your tricep really firmly. And then same action, pushing, pushing your shin bone to the floor, to the tricep, pushing the hands to the floor, and then lifting your right leg up. So if I collapse, I'm pushing the shin bones to the tricep, my hips can be higher. The back leg is the same sensation as just now when we're doing this pose. One arm, one leg dog. If you are activating your legs muscles to shooting out the back leg, you will know what I'm talking about, okay? Even though this is an arm balancing poses, your legs needs to lift to facilitate this flying up sensations. If, if your legs is relaxed, 
Sometimes I see students doing warrior three. If your legs is just hanging over the hips, you will feel really heavy. It's like your drunk friend out of consciousness and you need to support the body weight. It feels very heavy. But then if you are very consciously pushing out the legs towards the back of the room, engage the hamstring to lifting it up higher, and then it feels lighter, okay? Let me do my second side to show you again. Flex your ankles, curl your toes, hook outside of the tricep. Make sure it's above the elbows, otherwise it's very easy to slip out. Okay, shift forward. If you cannot straighten the back leg, just bend your back knee, do tiptoe like this. Once you think you are strong enough, keep it here. And then in order to straighten the back leg, the front leg needs to have enough flexibility to stay there by themselves rather than using the back knee to pushing the foot forward. Make sense? So, right now, I'm using my back leg to make sure my front foot can hook. In order to lifting, I need to pushing the right shin bones to the tricep and then lifting the back leg up. Okay? For those of you who can already do this pose, I will show you a transition, which is very interesting as well, to transitioning from flying pigeon to Kondiasana 2. So you're coming to your flying pigeon first. Okay, now to go to Kondiasana 2, you need to bring your right knee slightly forward, pressing to the inner knee to the tricep and then unhook your left ankles. From here, you slide your left knees out, keep pushing, pause here, and then shooting out two legs, called the asana two. Of course, it requires tons of upper body strength, but as you practice more, the same challenging, intense, seemingly impossible pose will become less hard, less intense, and more possible. Let me show you for the other side, okay? Do the transitioning slow, keep pushing, draw the abdominal muscles strongly in. Okay, so flying pigeon, bring your left knee forward, pressing in the knee to the left tricep, slide your right knee out, and then shooting out two legs, like a scissor, and then coming down. Whew, good. Um, any transitioning from one on balance to the other on balance, it's very fun, but also challenge, uh, challenging in a good way, because it requires you to Really master the single pose very solidly. And then with some repetition of practice, you can maintain the two shapes while you're transitioning from one to the other. For those of you who can already do a tripod headstand, I will also quickly show you how to go from flying pigeon to tripod headstand. And then if you have enough strength, you can come in back. Flying pigeon, drop your head, bend your left knees, lifting the hips higher, unhook your right foot, and as you're pushing the hands down, lifting the legs up, try for headstand. When you're coming down, figure four first. Bend your left knee, pushing with your left knee to the right foot until your right Ankles can be hooking to the tricep. Keep pushing the hands down, lifting the head, and then shooting out your left leg. Good. I will also 
show you from a different angle. Sorry, I need to place it with my buttocks. But then I think this view, you can see a little bit more clearly. Flying pigeon, lower the head down, bend your top leg, unhook the foot. As you keep pushing the hands to the floor, hug your elbows in, straighten your legs up. When you're coming down, figure four, bend your knees, oh, hook. And then, pushing the shin bones to the tricep, lifting the legs up, and coming down. Very good. <laughs> so obviously the transitioning will be a definitely intermediate level of practice. If you're still struggling to go to your flying pigeon or even bakasana, just strengthening your arms a little bit more, strengthening your abs a little bit more. If you're suffering from tight hips, another very good exercise you can do to help you open up your hip joints. And I'm very happy to teach this class in at home setting so that I can show you how to do it. Find a chair. This is the active stretch for the hip joint. I don't know if you have played jianzi before. It's called shuttle cock, shuttle cock. So it's basically bottom is made of rubber, the top is made of feather. And then the kids will kick that shuttle cock this way. So as you can see, every kick is actually an external rotation for the hips, right? So now we'll be mimicking this action by lifting your foot up, actively external rotate your hip joints. If you have tight hips, it may look like you're just moving your knees up and down. But what I want is to move the knees out and move the foot in and up. So knee out and down, foot in and up. Yeah, so you can do this for a couple of sets, two to three sets, each set maybe 10 to 15 times. After that, placing your left ankles above the knees, a hip stretch. With your hips elevated, when you are doing this, you will feel a little bit more. So nail down your chest, relax your head, relax your arms, Pushing your right knee out and externally rotate your right knee down. Three, two, one. You can also do a twist here, placing your right elbows underneath your right foot. Namaste hands, twist your body towards the left. And then slowly release. Ooh, feels good. Okay, let's do the other side. So this activity, I was playing at shuttlecock when I was a kid. Unfortunately, as you grow up, there's a lot more attractions, which is much more addictive compared to this kind of simple toys, such as Facebook, Instagram, or any computer games. Um, but then doing this kind of activities, it's really good for the mobility and the flexibility of the hip joints. So even though we are no longer actually playing the toy, we can still try to mimic the action to actively stretch your hips. And generally I find active stretching is a lot more um, effective to improve the mobility of the joint. Yeah? If you're just stretching a muscle, maybe passive stretching is more effective but if you really want to improve the mobility of the joints, this kind of active, active stretching, which is actually to wake up your external rotator muscles, is a lot more effective. Okay? Good. Now let's do some cool down. So, stretching the forearms as we have been bearing a lot of weights on our wrists. Left hand, grab the four fingers of your right hand. Pull the fingers towards your body direction and then pushing your palms out. So you should feel some good stretch on your forearms muscles. And 
and slowly release. Let's do the other side. Pull the four fingers in, sending the palms out. And release. Good. Now we're stretching the other side of the forearms. Palms facing up, fingers towards each other. You will bend your elbows. And then you straighten your elbows as much as you can first. From here, you curl the fingers in, forming fists. And slowly release. Shake it out. Make circles with your wrist joints. And in the other direction. Good. Now let's stretch your shoulders. So straighten your left arm to the right side. Bend your right elbows. Hugging in your right fist towards your body. And you'll feel some stretch for the deltoid muscles. Um, today's sequence is not easy, but don't feel frustrated if you feel body is so heavy, you cannot lift up the feet at all. Um, it's just a matter of practice. You practice, repeat it, repeat it, and then with some persistence as well, you will get it. Okay? But you can target your weak areas. So if your weak area is your arm strength, do your push-up, do your chaturanga, if your target area is your abdominals, then do more abs exercise. If your hip joint mobility is your main biggest barrier, then do more hip opening. Okay? So as you practice more, the same pose will become easier, trust me. Okay? And release. Okay? Now sit your hips to the floor. Bend your elbows. Come form a chicken wing shape. Top of the wrist, outside of the ribs. Get your elbows in, and then squeeze the elbows towards the center. The more sensation you want to feel on your shoulders, the closer you squeeze the knees towards the center. And then slowly release. Good. Um, one thing very important as well is for those of you who can already do one side very well, and but the other side feels much less stable, it's very, very normal. Everyone will have their better side and the weaker side. But you need to always practice your weaker side. And I like to make this analogy that practicing the weaker side is like paying for your tax. Not something you like to do, but something you have to do. So always remember you need to practice the weaker side and I always suggest you practice the weaker side first when you still have more strength and then after that you will do your stronger side. Maybe if you have left, leftover strength, do the weaker side again so that gradually same side, uh, two sides become more or less the same. Okay? So coming to your knees again, moving your arms forward. Melt down your chin and your chest to the floor. Come into this extended cat pose to feel the stretching for the front side of the body. And roll your hips back. Child's pose. Roll down to your belly. Let's do more shoulder stretch. So reaching out your right arm to your right side, positioning of your right hand in line with the crown of your head. Starting to turn your body. Try to grab your right hand with your left hand. So you'll bend your knees, feet down, knees up. Pressing your feet down to rotate your torso so that your belly can go more up. The more you can twist your belly up, the easier it is to connect in your hands together. And 
and slowly release. Now let's do the other side. Make sure the hands are in line with the crown of your head. When you start to turn your body, if you feel already a lot of sensation on your shoulders, be gentle. Maybe only use the right hand pushing down the floor and then stay here. But if you can do more, lifting the head slightly off from the floor will help. And then you roll your shoulders back, connecting the fingers. Hold it here for three, two, and one. Slowly release. Take your time. This is quite an intense shoulder stretch. Roll your belly facing down. Let's do a twist. So moving your hips more towards the right side first. Turn your right knee towards the left side. Relax the right shoulders down to the floor by the left hand. Pressing down your top of your right knee gently but firmly. Release any leftover tension on the lower back. On your hips. Coming back to the center, switching sides. Reaching your right leg forward, bend your left knees. Moving your hips more towards the left side first. And then bring the left knee towards the right. Using your right hand gently but firmly pressing down the top of your left knee. Slowly coming back to the center, happy baby pose. Now, before I had my son, I never understand why this pose is called happy baby. I guess I didn't spend too much time observing how babies behave. And then after I had my boy, and then it makes perfect sense why this is called happy baby. Because babies really like to do this pose by grabbing their feet and just smiling at their parents. Try to lengthen in your lower back so your sacrum should be still touching the floor. If this is too much for you, you can grab your ankles, no problem. Good, and now release the whole body. Please join me for a quick shavasana so you will relax your body all the way from your head to your feet. Let your shoulders relax, arms fall to the side, palms facing up. Any leftover tension in your body, just let it go. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, raise it out. If you wish to stay here for longer, please feel free to do so.
Thank you, me to move on for the rest of the day. So I'll be breaking away as fast as I can. Move your toes. Stretch your arms over your head. Take a deep inhalation. Lengthening your entire body. Exhale. Sigh it out. Slowly turn your body to your right side. Using your right elbows as your pillows. Pressing your hands down to the floor. Slowly push yourself up. To a seated position, keep your eyes still closed, relax your shoulders, relax your palms on top of your knees. Enjoy this precious moment after the practice. When your body is very steady and your mind is very Join your palms in front of your heart center. Bow your head to your heart. Let us know. Thank you so much for watching this video. I may be producing more contents in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned. Namaste. Thank you.